Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the One Nation of Gamers Summer Circuit Feature Tournament number four. Once again, I'm TJ, joined by Trump. Trump, we're one game away from finding out who's going to be uh, the second player from Group A moving on uh, to the playoff stage on Sunday. Uh, these players have very similar lineups. Now, uh, I know this is a tough question, but uh, based off the lineups that we've seen so far, what are your predictions going into this last match? All right. I think Shockey has the advantage because uh, Hunter is strong against Druid. Hunter is strong against Hamlock. And Hunter does its, uh, holds its own against uh, Patron. Uh, from Privet's side, Druid is a little bit weaker against the mid range Hunter. Uh, it looked to be about 50 50 against Hamlock. Uh, actually, Hamlock was surprisingly favored. And Druid against Patron? I'm a little interested in, uh, to see what the statistic is for that. Um, I would suspect. Patron to be a bit ahead. So basically, out of the third decks, I think Chalky's got the advantage. And therefore, Chalky has the slight match advantage. All right. Well, we'll see how that plays out. Um, both these players are coming off of 3-0 matches. Chalky was on the losing end, and Privet was on the winning end. Um, an interesting stat for these players. Both of them have 3 0 impact today. <laughs> oh, my which, God. <laughs> which is... Uh, a little bit funny, but doesn't really give us much in the ways of of analysis for these players since their decks lined up well against against him. So um, jumping into the first match, it is going to be Chalky throwing out the uh, the Hunter and Privet. I didn't quite see, but it looks like it is going to be the Malagos Warlock. Okay. Oh man, I actually said Handlock, so I have to correct myself and be like, okay, Hunter's actually. Um, I think it's still pretty good against Malagos. Not as good, but uh, still favored, I'd say. Yeah, I definitely would say so. They usually have a little bit better creatures to fight back on board, like with uh, Blackwing Corruptor being able to instantly kill things and uh, more spells early on to fight for the board. Uh, they don't have walls, but they have heals. So uh, it's sort of similar. It's just a lot of times they can apply more pressure earlier. Yeah, uh, really good stuff. I love opening Zombie Chow against Hunter. That is my favorite card. Uh, not just my favorite card, but it's especially my favorite card when I'm going first and I have it in the hand and I'm up against a Hunter. So, the Ooh, ideal Chow. situation then. Silverback Patriarch. The King of the Oh, Jones. that's an interesting card to uh, put in the Malagos. Um,. The three slot is a bit contested because you can have Imp Gang Bus, you can have Technician, and you've got uh, Earthen Ring Farseer too, apparently. Yeah, uh, this is sort of reminiscent of the very early versions of the Malagos Warlock. It feels like as it went along, people started to like Imp Gang Boss better because um, it didn't require the Dragon Synergy. At its core, they're sort of the same amount stat-wise where um, if... In game boss takes damage once, it's still 3 5 worth of stats. It's just that the Blackwing Technician, if you get it buffed to the 3 5, it can trade better into 3 health things early on. Mm -hmm. If that was a freezing trap, this would be really strong value for the uh, Zombie Chow. Actually, it's probably good value either way, but it does turn out to be explosive trap. Yeah. It would be a little bit rough if. Chucky didn't have an Eagle Horn bow up because it would be giving Privet a lot of value out of the Zombie Chow, but he is going to be able to at least get another charge out of that bow, which is a pretty big deal in the long run. It's a lot of consistent damage over, over the course of many turns. It turns, ends up being 9 damage over 3 turns for 3 mana. It is. Uh, Privet hesitated before attacking, and there was even some consideration uh, to not attack for a while, I suppose. Uh, but in case it was freezing, it was definitely the best time to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Ah, well, he can black ring corruptor, and then trade in his technician. But it doesn't feel too great. I guess it's trading a creature in a battle cry for a Lothep, which is not the worst thing in the world. So. That's right. Definitely doesn't feel great to send in your 3-5 into something that does 5, but good enough. And also, almost forced to make the play because of the way that the dragon-holding mechanic works. If you don't make the, if you don't play the Corruptor now, then 
you're not uh, going to get the battle cry sometimes. Yeah. So Chucky here, he can play Knife Juggler, Hunter's Mark, the Blackman Corruptor, and then play uh, Silverback Patriarch and try and go for the juggle. But it looks like he's just going to play the Silverback Patriarch anyway. And oh with the hopes gosh. of turning it's it here. into a Fen Creeper. This bow is going to get a lot of value. Because he's... Oh my a goodness. Satisfying Black Knight. Wow. wow. Chucky is looking at it like, what could this be? Oh my goodness. Black Knight, the ultimate counter to the Silverback Patriarch. The natural predator. None shall pass. <laughs> well, Chucky does have the Knife Juggler Unleashed combo. And this bow has gotten some serious value. It's a 3-4 weapon, or 3. That's a good deal. And he just goes ahead and holds. I was sort of expecting him to Hunter's Mark and trade off, but um, it's a little bit dangerous. Uh, reason being is because he hasn't managed to apply too much pressure yet. If he uses Hunter's Mark, there is the chance that Privet just plays Malagos on turn 9. Um, because they have the mid range turner has just limited amounts of just hard removal, Hunter's Mark being sort of the only one. Um, he might just be scared of a little bit of a bigger threat, but uh, that could be one of the reasons why he held back and he's being a little bit conservative with it. Also, Knife Juggler Unleash, Hunter's Mark combos really nicely with that. Very true, and I certainly expect it to be his play. There's a few things that'll beat that one here. Yeah. Probably doesn't even need to use the Hunter's Mark because Black Knight had two health. Hunter's Mark, zero dam zero mana, one damage, effectively. Not the greatest. Pretty comfortable position from uh, Malagos Lock. The Savannah Hyman is a really good draw in order to keep the pressure up later. That looked like Chucky was just about out of steam, but that Savannah Hyman sets him up to have a little bit more later. Yep. Ah, he's starting to apply the pressure. He's going to fit in a hero power this turn. He's going to be able to go face with at least a couple of these dogs. Get him with a weapon swing as well. Savannah Jaime is going to come down next turn. This is... Uh, yeah, could be pretty scary. Like we mentioned earlier, the Malagos Warlock has more pressure tools early on, more spells... Um, they have a lot of heals, but they don't have ways to build a wall and block damage. Yep, this is going to be a little bit of a test for Heart here. Actually, I was probably going to... Uh, fast Instinct, when I looked at that hand, was I was probably going to do Dark Bomb, uh, Emperor Thorasan. And that would be the Heart required to not play anti kill bot. But Privet is feeling the pressure, and he goes with the heal bot. Uh, if you go with Dark Bomb and Emperor Thorasan... Then there's two damage of dogs on the board. You're at, uh, let's see, he was going to be at 12 before the heal. And I don't think that was going to be dead. And if you develop the Emperor Thorasan, you have a much better chance in the long game. Uh, but Privet just feels the pressure, I suppose. Yeah, now he's in a, a little bit of a pickle. No heals, no taunts. No ways to get through this Savannah High main. At least yeah, this not This is where well. having the heart to play Emperor Thorasan last turn was pretty important. Uh, because in this world, you are left with nothing, and you have a bit uh, more health. But in the other world, you have the 5-5 five, five down. Your stuff all costs a lot cheaper. And perhaps you have the tools necessary to mount a comeback in the later game. Um, but yeah, that's Savannah, I mean, is certainly a big deal. And Thorsen getting discarded is not so bad because it wasn't played earlier. It looks like you've run out of time to play it. Yep. Chucky is pretty much just like a burn spell away from being able to close it out. Um, he's just going to opt to hold on to the pilot of Shredder. He hasn't seen AoE yet. He doesn't want to overextend too much on the board. 
He's yeah, in on the a, other hand, Privet is an AOE away from closing it out as well. If he had a Hellfire here, uh, you could just Hellfire and then send in the Imp King boss and then play the Heal Bot, and it looks pretty good from there. Unfortunately, no Hellfire to be found. Yeah. Still, he could buy a little bit more time. Well, not much. He can heal bot, but if he heal bots, that's pretty much all he's playing this turn, besides the Twilight Drake. And then he's staring at 10 damage at least on the board. Yeah. All of a sudden, um, the kill command wins. There was probably some consideration to playing a uh, Corruptor there, because Corruptor gets rid of 4 damage, and you don't die on the board. But a little bit too risky to play with just 1 damage required, so this one's good. Yeah. All right, looks like it's time to try and smork him down. Jackie realizes that he's out of heal. So he needs to just try and push as much damage as he can. Once again, a burn spell away from closing it out, whether that be... Oh, there's the Hellfire. Turn late. Uh, Privet is... just does the shake. He's now way too low to use it, and there's too many threats on the board. Um, but there's always the chance for Doomsayer. But even with a Doomsayer, he's out of heals, and it wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't be able to last long enough. Yeah. Could he even clear? Yeah, he could clear the whole thing. He'd have to attack into the Haunted Creeper, too, because even Doomsayer would leave behind two 1-1s. One hmm. Oh, Soul fires his own face. Oh, decides to concede instead. I think he doesn't want to give away uh, any unnecessary information about his deck because so far it does discard a card. So it mm, uh, looks right. like Chucky is going to uh, take a victory and goes up 1-0 in the series. Finds a win with the Hunter, which you sort of mentioned it earlier. Hunter has a lot of reasonable matchups against this lineup from Privet, so uh, it was bound to find a win somewhere, and he does it in game number one. Yeah, um, I thought Chucky's Hunter was favored against most of Privet's decks, and good that he got a matchup win, uh, a game win on it. And being off 1 0 is obviously a big deal. Uh, yeah. Your chances of winning the match uh, goes without saying that it goes up, uh, but it does tilt the odds quite a lot. Yep. Keep in mind, the winner of this match does move on to the playoff stage on Sunday where they guarantee themselves $750 and also get uh, to a point where they only have to win two more matches to qualify for packs where they can compete for an additional lion's share of $25,000 at the grand finals there and uh, compete against Trump himself who won the last feature tournament, feature tournament number three. Yeah, that tournament is going to be a really big deal for me personally. Uh, ooh, goes with the Acolyte on three. I'm, I would be concerned to do this because, one, the Handlock is going to spend this turn doing something, either Owl or Dark Bomb. Uh, it's not a turn you could tap anyways. And... Yeah, that's my main concern. And two, basically with an Acolyte, you're risking... Drawing zero cards. Uh, looks like Privet is going to go with the Dark Bomb route with the tap. Um, I might have gone for just Dark Bomb because I personally am a fan of keeping the coin over card. Yeah. So, I want to get your thoughts on this matchup in general. Handlock has a good time against Patron Warrior. But Malagos Warlock is a little bit different. They still have the AoE tools, but they don't have the big walls. Is this Patron favored from someone who's played Malagos Warlock a bit? Oh boy. Uh, I don't. I think there might not be enough data to really know this one. Um, from my experience, it was definitely less good. Um, I kind of ballparked it as even, so... Uh, I'd say it's maybe plus or minus 10% from yeah. even. All right. Maybe we can get some statistics on that. Um, but 
It is going to be... They do have, like we said, sort of similar to the 100 matchup. They have tools to fight back on the board early. Like they have uh, Blackwing Corruptor allows them more damage from hand. And cards like Blackwing Technician allow them to contest the board earlier than a handlock would have been able to. He also still runs the Black Knight in this, which is going to be a little bit of a disadvantage in the Patron matchup because the only taunt that they can get value on is a unstable ghoul. Yep. The main problems, well, the main downsides of this deck versus uh, Handlock against this is your threats aren't nearly as threatening. Yes, you can play a 5-mana card here, which deals 3 damage, but as you can see, the targets that the Grim Patron has doesn't care too much that you're dealing 3 damage to it. In fact, none of them die here. Um, and you've got your variety of 3-5s, 4-4s, 5-4s, 3-3s. You just don't quite cause enough pressure to the Patron. Um... And that looks to be the case here. However, it is worth mentioning that Chalky's hand is uh, uninspiring. Right now, he actually has to make a decision on whether or not he wants to risk it all. Uh, he could go Grim Patron in a rage and then swing the Despite and get a board. Uh, we actually know that Privet doesn't have the board clear, but with such a big hand, I don't think he can make the risk. Okay. Ooh. Battle Rage is a really great pickup. Harrison Jones not going to really be that effective. So we do have the statistics. Uh, Malagos Warlock has a slight edge over Patient Warrior. 53.57% um, win rate. So 15 wins for Malagos Warlock, 13 wins for Patient Warrior. Those are the competitive statistics. So, uh, again, that could be a little bit skewed. Patient decks have sort of evolved since the time that most of the Malagos Warlock patron decks um, have existed. Uh, nowadays, they have a little bit more cycle included with cards like Shield Block. Um, hey! And they're, they're Black less Knight's tech down the value. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> so funny. Wow. He's managed to kill a Silverback Patriarch as well as an Unstable Ghoul with the Black Knight this series. Really impressive stuff. I believe that's first execute. Mm -hmm. yeah. So one of the ways that Malagos Warlocks win in this match is just by straight up playing Malagos later on in the game. Uh, warriors like Hunters are susceptible to only having a limited amount of hard removal. Uh, Patron Warriors. They usually only run two executes. Some people run Shield Slams, but usually it's only double execute. So once a, a Malagos Warlock sees double execute has been used, a lot of times they'll just play Malagos on an empty board and all of a sudden you're staring at usually legal opportunities within a turn. So um, that's uh, one thing to, to note in this matchup as a win condition for the Malagos Warlock. That's right. Uh, definitely one of the decks that you can actually do that against. Uh, very rare for you to do it against any other deck because hard removal exists. Yeah. And when you can spend an extra... Nine mana, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So the primary win condition for the Warrior in this matchup is basically just to kill the uh, Malagos Warlock in a turn. Uh, patrons don't really give you much of a benefit because uh, so many AoE spells in the Malagos Warlock usually double Hellfire Shadow Flame, sometimes double Shadow Flame Hellfire, sometimes double both, but that's rare. And uh, you can tell that Chucky is very hesitant to use his combo pieces to actually make patrons. Uh, but it looks like he's going to do it here just because there's too much pressure going at him on the board. Yep. Uh, he'll probably uh, be just, using the... What was I think that? it's the game. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to have six total patrons, two of which would be five attacks. So, yeah, that's going to be um, 22 damage total. So <laughs> that is his game. Well, there you go. That's how it works. You kill him in one turn. Yeah, uh, it turns out that the patrons, if you have exactly two inner rage, uh, they do quite a lot of damage. Yeah, the double Warsong patron, double inner rage, whirlwind is 20, 22 damage. Yep. Uh, uh, numbers you get familiar with 14 with an inner rage, uh, and with one more you get the plus two and the plus three. 5, 10, 13, 16, 19, 22. All right, well. Chucky finds a quick victory in game number two now, so just one win away. 
from securing his spot in that playoffs. He just needs to find a win with Handlock. So he's got to beat Patron, uh, Druid, or Malagos Warlock. So likely that he'll find a win in one of those. The Patron matchup's pretty good for him. And Privet's just going to throw at the Malagos Warlock first, which is his best matchup against this deck. Or, well, mm -hmm. he only needs to win with it. So um, Chalky's going to throw at his worst matchup first. Which yeah, he tends and Chalky's uh, competitive in the World Championship point standing as well. So at PAX, not only is $25,000 going to be up for grabs, but those 230 sweet World Championship points to get into BlizzCon. So I'm sure Chalky is as excited as I am to get a chance at this. and He's just yep. one win away. Uh, Chalky's currently 18th. Uh, Trump, you're currently 10th. So um, top 8 is the sweet spot, because that means you get that uh, much-coveted buy in the uh, round of 40, I believe is how it works. Uh, so top yeah, 8 two is... two buys, even. Two buys, yeah. So top 8 sort of guarantees you that you get further along in the regionals. And so both you and Chalky are sort of in the running to uh, get enough points to qualify you for the top 8 relatively easily if you can place... if you can make it to packs for Chalky's case, uh, but for your case, if you can just place well in that. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, a lot on the line. Huh, Chalky with a very interesting start here. So he obviously didn't have the Mountain Giant when he started the game, and he's down to one of the smallest hands I've seen of a handlock. <laughs> uh, in this matchup, I suppose you can just try to beat him up, since uh, the Malagos lock tends to... Uh, it has some board clear, and it has some small minions, but... I guess this is using your minions to the best of their abilities. It turns out that it's pretty good not to have the Mountain Giant also, because Privet is sitting there with a BGH. With two BGH. Two BGHs, yep. So that is the smallest handlock Twilight Drake I've seen in a long time. It's a, it's basically a Yeti. Yeah, kind of surprising to see how it's still a Yeti, even despite basically playing card each turn. But that is how it works. You know, now, though, he's in a position where he just doesn't have things to play. He's uh, still a turn away, or two turns away from, nope, just one turn away from Mountain Giant. His natural draw next turn will allow, allow him to play it for six. Yep. It oh, man. Net. This is the type of... Uh, sometimes seeing both players' hands is good, because you're going to be able to see the despair that Chalky is. You get to, like, preview to despair Chalky with face when he goes... Uh, Mountain Giant into Dr. Boom, and then he faces BGH into BGH. Yeah. It's going to be a sad day. Chucky was once upon a time a very emotional player, but uh, now nothing really affects him. The only emotion he's shown today is when he messed up the Patriot turn, which I talked to him during the break, and uh, he went back and looked, and it would have been lethal. Uh, just oh, with, wow. Just with the frothing. Um, he didn't even need the patron because his triple whirlwinds with both unstable ghouls plus the whirlwind would have been, uh, would have been enough to get through. Uh, he went back and calculated it. So it would have been like Wait, two over lethal. How was he going to get through all those taunts with three whirlwinds? Some of them had all five the health. Uh, one fire war axe. Uh, a hit with the fire war axe plus the triple whirlwind would have been enough to get through everything. Wow. Uh, all right. So that was the only time he said the frothing top deck baited him. Mm, right. Great bait, mate. From the top deck Frothing Berserker. He got a, a little too hyphy with it and uh, met his demise. But uh, this time around, he's already found a win with Patron, so uh, that's sort of out of the way for him. At least he has three BGH targets. So now once <laughs> the Dr. Boom gets BGH as well, he'll be able to throw it to Mountain Giant, which will be met with a swift demise from the Siphon Soul. All the answers, Oof. Rivet. Yeah, and the longer the game goes, the more likely Malagos is to win because the Malagos Warlock is the one with the inevitability. Uh, if you manage to get past that early hurdle of big stuff, then in the late game, the Handlock is naturally forced to tap, and you're going to get the super mega damage combo off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Second BJ is going to come out. Oh, I found this to be a little bit interesting. Um, yeah, 
That makes sense. I was almost expecting BJH to go into a a bomb, but it makes sense to force Chalky to make the trade. Mm -hmm. So, uh, oh, he was applying to Hellfire, but now he doesn't need to. Yeah. If he was going to Hellfire, the best way to do it would have been just to throw both bombs at the face and then Hellfire. Because regardless, the Azure Drake's left at one health. One of the Boombots will kill it. So you maximize your damage potential that way. But uh, he looks like he's going to opt to hold on to the Hellfire. Um, maybe think he's going to find a bigger board. Or maybe think he's going to need that for burst later in the game to try and close it out. You sound awfully confident there that a Boombot would kill it. Well, if... Yeah, it's not guaranteed, but... It's pretty likely. And um, he did have uh, Mortal Coil as well to kill it off in the event that it didn't kill it. So either way, the most efficient way to do it would have been to go face if he was going to plan on it. So that gave right, us I guess the, this the tell. was one of the ways that he could have uh, spared a Hellfire. The Hellfire isn't that big a deal in this matchup, but it's kind of nice to just have an AoE. Mm-hmm. Well, this is exactly what Privet wants. The sl like you said, the slower the game goes, uh, the worse off the handlock's going to be because that just gives... You give you give a combo deck room, they're just going to uh, walk all over you with it. Right. I'm almost, uh, I almost think that Privet might be happy that Antique Killbot was played because it gives them less to worry about in terms of Molten Giants. There's some breakpoint where the Molten Giants might come in at just the right cost that you can't burn them down quickly enough. Uh, but it looks like Privet's doing pretty well here. Ooh, the BGH is a good target for the Shadow Flame, though. Yeah. Uh, you're usually not likely to find a BGH target in this deck. Maybe Dr. Boom, which some Malagos Warlocks do run. But other than that, you're really not going to find much of anything. Um, so you most likely can just go ahead and Shadow Flame this. The thing is, though, it's very reactive play from Chalky, and I don't know if he can really afford that. I guess you mm. really don't have another option. You can try and throw right. it Sylvanas, but that's vulnerable to an owl, and you're also vulnerable to just taking a lot of damage. Okay, he's actually going to go with a play to dig a bit deeper into his deck with the Mortal Coil. Uh, that's fine. Uh, it's just that the 4 1 is actually kind of a threat. Yeah. Four damage plus spell power. He ends up playing it anyway, so I guess you're right. It would that was exclusively to try and get further into his deck. Yeah, Chalky does know that in this matchup you are kind of on a clock. You're the one that needs to make something happen because if you do nothing, the opponent will eventually win. So yeah. he speeds it up a bit. That's uh, that might even be the right play. Yeah. Uh, Privet is. In the meantime, still assembling his combo, he's had the Thor sand for a while with a full hand, but it's kind of similar to Patron, where you don't want to play it uh, until you basically have to, A, or B, you have the Super Wombo combo, and the Super Wombo combo isn't here yet. Yeah, he really wants that second Dark Bomb or second Soul Fire in order to make the... Oh, he doesn't have second Dark Bomb, so second Soul Fire to really piece it together, especially against Handlock, because... Um, a lot of times you won't be able to push the extra damage to with creatures once you get them low. So a lot of times that extra damage will, will be relevant. Ah, oh, that's the reason why he saved Shadow Flame, because he had Sylvanas. Uh, maybe Chucky was hoping that he could have captured the Malagos with the Sylvanas Shadow Flame. Yeah, that's, yeah. Missed that one, but it's uh, A-OK. -okay. And is this the Pretty point where you absolutely <laughs> have to? Privet doesn't know this, but if he went Malagos uh, Coil, that would be a really good play because uh, Chalky doesn't have an answer. Um, at this point, though, I think... Let's see. Ooh, this is kind of tough because... Man, Chalky having, Malago or Chalky having Ragnaros in his deck in hand really changes this because normally the... Uh, Handlock can only burst for something like 9 damage with, bur uh, with bombs, but he's got the special 8 damage here. Wow. 
Twilight Drake, and Emperor finally comes down, so it is only going to hit two of these spells. That's still quite a bit of burst, though. Uh, the Dark Bomb Soulfire is uh, 8 plus 9, so uh, 17 damage. Mm -hmm. And it uh, hits the Quail as well, which is a nice bonus. Uh, yep. You only really need to get one of the Soulfires reduced, because the other one costing one will be enough for the Malago Soulfire Soulfire Dark Bomb still. Mm, yeah. Jockey's real close. Uh, he only needs possibly two more damage, but it's going to be very hard to find that and also get the Ragnaros to hit. Yeah, he really wants to hold on to the Siphon Soul because that's his only way to deal with Malagos if he comes down. Um, that's one of the reasons why Privet is didn't just play the Malagos in Mortal Coil the last turn, but it looks like he is going to have to. Uh, and, yep. I mean, that might prompt Privet to just play the Malagos. Yeah, I mean, uh, all Hamlock decks pretty much only run exactly one hard removal if they even run it. So, that's a pretty good signal that the Malagos is safe. Still, though, with your tournament life on the line... It's definitely worth some thought, and he does have a play with Heelbot to just sort of bring himself out of range to try and get it by him one more turn. Um, That's right. To, to get to the uh, last spell that he needs. And it looks like that is going to be the line that he takes. He finds Dark Bomb. Oh, he did have a second Dark Bomb. Okay, it was Chucky that used one of the Dark Bombs earlier. But that's not really enough. And this just... could be a little bit of a challenge for Privet because it seems like there's either going to be a risk in well No, there's not much risk. All Privet needs is the Soulfire. And then he has to not discard Soulfire to Soulfire. So we can buy time with anti healbot plus Defender of Argus. Oh. Oh. Hmm. That doesn't allow him to use Healbot, though. Which gives Chalky an out. Uh, if except the load he has up on the board. Vargas. Right. Oh, yeah, that's true. So he can defend Vargas and trade in. Yeah, so it looks like that might just lock Chalky out of the game. Yeah, defender Vargas comes down. He can just trade in. Yikes. I don't think that there's a way for Chucky to come back in this one. Mm, Even yeah. with just Dark Bomb Soulfire next turn, only one creature on the board has to survive any amount of damage. So Chucky needs a full board clear here. And even if he taps into like a second uh, Shadow Flame. Um, yeah, this is not going to be enough points of taunt to block it out. And that should do it for Privet. Oh, well, Privet gets on the board. Uh, this is probably his most favorite matchup in any deck against any deck out of the uh, three decks from each side. So that's out of the way. The hard part is yet to come. Uh, okay, I think there's multiple lethal uh, ways here. Um, yeah, so Chucky just goes ahead and concedes. He should just Shadow Flame just throwing all his spells without the Malagos. So Malagos actually hasn't even been played. Has it? No, it hasn't. <laughs> I don't think it has. So, uh, Chucky, of course, saw Privet play uh, yesterday in the qualifier. He's casting it, so he knows that Malagos is in the deck. Um, but uh, Privet is going to take a win there, and Chalky still needs to find a win with that handlock. He matchups are going to sort of get easier and easier for him as we go up. I imagine Privet's going to throw out Druid here, and yep, he does. So that's a slightly better matchup. Um, but again, as we saw the statistics earlier, this matchup is very close to 50-50, at least as far as competitive win rates go. Sure is. Finds a Twilight Drake. Privet finds a Keeper. Will he find the growth? No. 
And that is always a sight that you want to see when you're playing against Druid. Turn 2 comes up, you're staring at that hero power. As soon as he clicks it, you feel a, a slight bit of relief. Worms your soul. Soon uh, Druids are going to get uh, two chances, four chances rather, at the Wild Growth with that new 2-3. Uh, yep. The Aspirant. Or, I think that's how you pronounce it. I've heard it pronounced many different ways. Somebody's got to be right. I hope it's one of those where either pronunciation is right. It could be. It could be. Um, all right. Keeper lines up nicely. Doesn't find a way to kill it. And now he has to decide whether or not he values his shade over his keeper. And in this matchup, I'd value shade far more. And he does. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow, Chalky with the dream start, though, uh, with the Mountain Giant draw. So one of the problems with coining out the Twilight trick is your Mountain Giant can't be played, but if you go specifically Twilight, Twilight, and Mountain, that's probably the best second player start for Handluck. Yep. But Privet picks up another answer. Uh, so the two Keeper is lined up against the two Twilights, so that's really good. <laughs> now all he needs is a Big Game Hunter for the hat trick. That would be very impressive, but I'm not sure if it's that likely. I guess Keeper off the top wasn't likely either, so um, Privet does have to decide whether or not he wants to play off curve, though. And it looks like he is just going to go ahead and play the Druid of the Claw, and then next turn he can open up uh, a Keeper hero power uh, to deal with the Twilight Drake. Hmm, a he hard is, choice to make. Oh, yeah. and he also reveals... It's an interesting turn. He does have Savage Roar, so he knows that uh, he can start threatening early, but this could be vulnerable to Shadow Flame. I'm not sure if that's if Chucky is going to think that this is going to be efficient enough of a Shadow Flame to go for it, because he would delay his threats for another turn, like not being able to play the Mountain Giant. Right, so it's a trade-off of... Uh sending, well, of Shadow Flaming what you presume to be no Keeper because he didn't play it uh, and taking 8 damage versus playing the Giant and I think delaying a turn to block the 8 damage is worthwhile enough. Yeah, and Privet attacking with the Shade last turn seems to be a, a play around Shadow Flame because he wants to get at least some damage in with the Shade coming up on a turn where Shadow Flame would be really powerful against him. And now Chucky's at the point where he can fit in a tap with his mountain, so he's going to go ahead and play that. No BGH, BGH yet in the hand of Privet. And he yep. doesn't find one. But Chucky's close uh, to the combo range, and that's Dr. Boom coming up. Chucky doesn't look to have... I mean, he does have the answer to Dr. Boom with the BGH, but that Shredder is actually going to be the main concern here. Yeah, because it's hard to remove. You're almost always going to leave at least something on the board, which can be a target for Savage Roar. Knife Juggler, ouch. Hmm, pretty top tier drop, but I think uh, Chucky was committed to clearing most of the results there. Mm hmm. Emperor Thorisand picked up. That's a bit scary. That is. Privet's got that. a decision to make between playing the Emperor and playing the Ancient of Lore. On the one hand, Emperor does reduce a good amount of cards and is a big threat, and it has five attack to deal with the Mountain Giant. But on the other hand, if you Ancient of Lore, you might draw into Force of Nature, which is the card you actually want. Get you closer, yep. They both put the same amount of power on the board, and Emperor Thorsan doesn't allow you to do anything else, but uh, it looks like he is going to go for uh, most likely Emperor, judging by the hero power. Uh, maybe. I think it depends. He might go Keeper now as a result. Yeah, if this goes face or hits the Ancient Watcher, well now he can just go oh. Keeper. Wow. 
big boom bot results for that. Uh, he didn't want to hit the face because that threatened Molten. That was about the best result he could have gotten. Now Chalky's in a little bit of a rough spot. Uh, he does have two ways to block combo here with Sludge Belcher and Lothab. I guess mm -hmm. anti Heal Bot is another way because it'd bring him out of range enough. What's going to be interesting is to see if Chalky decides to make the play that doesn't block against uh, either. He does choose to make it. And this is a this is a tough play to make, but it turns out to be the right play in the case which you feel like, okay, uh, I'm never going to be able to dig myself out of this uh, fourth savage hole. So this is the turn where he's least likely to have it. I'm going to make the play to not play around that. At least give myself a chance to win. Especially since there was a potential that Privet might have even had double combo since it's coming up on turn 9 and he reduced 5 cards in the hand. So um, you're never going to be able to play around something like that. So I, I really do like this line of play. Taking a, a calculated risk. Mm -hmm. Privet's got it now. But at this point, uh, Chucky at least has a board that's set up to be a little bit better. If he draws into Taunt, and if he takes some damage, uh, the Molten Giants will win Chucky the game, but I don't think Privet is going to accommodate Chucky here. Yeah, and Privet's deck looks like it's very... not very tech, but... Definitely strong against oh, Handlock. Is, is he? Oh boy! Okay. So if Chalky gets a taunt, oh right, Privet had the Black Knight in hand though, so he was more willing to make this play. Mm -hmm. Oh man, this is tough. If you tap and don't pick up a taunt, I mean, I guess you tap anyway because you'd still have the same amount of mana regardless. You'd just be two health lower. Uh, he's trying to think, is 9... If I tap, and I don't draw into a taunt, do I have enough stuff to block 9 damage, even without combo, like just from the board? Mm. So it looks like he's going to try Boombots first. Ooh. An interesting consideration there would have been to Hellfire first also, and then hope that your Boombots uh, did exceptionally well. Well, they end up doing exceptionally well with a three on a three health minion uh, and finishing off the other minion. Uh, this has opened up a few possibilities. You can actually get away with... Um, yeah, man, Boombots have been exceptional here. Wow. <laughs> he just played nearly his whole hand. So is that going to be enough to stop it? And I think it will. Uh, Savager Keeper Hero Power. And what a turnaround. Seven. And he doesn't play a single taunt, so Privet can't even get Black Knight value. And this is perfect because uh, you play the strong cards now, and the next turn, you block the taunt forever, uh, block the combo forever with Healbot Sludge Belcher if you don't already win. Yeah. Looks like uh, Chalky has managed to navigate this very tricky game uh, to a victory. That was a very close one. Could have easily gone to Privet. Uh, there's still a chance, albeit a small one. But it is very, a very slim chance. <laughs> the Ogre Brute. He can clear off a few things here. But he really just doesn't have creatures to develop. Ogre Brute is a about the only one. <laughs> and I mean, he's going to take 21 damage just from the board. And like you mentioned, next turn, the combo is going to be blocked out. He's going to heal back up to 18, plus put a taunt in the way. Is double combo enough to get through, though? Not with that. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. It might have been. Got to get rid of that brute. It could uh, accidentally hit the face. Yeah. So I think the most damage that you can... That uh, chooses not to do the most damage block, but it's not necessary. Yeah. Oh man, double combo. Maybe it was better to double block in case uh, Keeper Force Savage Savage happened. He's actually one man off of being able to double combo keeper. 
Right. If uh, a different set of cards had been reduced, looks like Chalky would have lost. Uh, yeah. When it when you think about how Thorson actually reduced by two, it was probably better to do the Sun Fury Protector just because there were some very crazy things that could have happened. Yeah. Um, Sludge Belcher plus Sun Fury probably would have been the best way. I guess maybe playing around Black Knight a little more, but not really because I think he'd still have enough damage for lethal even if one of his giants was taken out. So... Um, Keeper is going to be played, and maybe Privet has found a way to not make himself die the next turn. But no, he hasn't. He's still dead to board. Mm. All right. Well, it looks like that is going to be it, and Chalky is going to take the series three to one. He'll be the second player joining Silent Storm from the group to move on to the semifinals on Sunday. Both players guaranteed at least $750, and they will be just two matches closer from uh, getting to play at the Grand Finals at PAX, compete for another $25,000, plus, like we mentioned earlier, the 230, I believe, World Championship points. Yeah, 230. So Chucky's got to be feeling happy about his performance today. Right, especially since the risk that he made to basically advance into contention from PAX paid off. So, educated risk, calculated risk, you have to make those in order to win sometimes. Chalky picks the best spot for it and it pays off. And I'm sure he's going to be looking forward to possibly, he's one step closer to competing at the PAX Prime uh, Championship for $25,000 and 230 World Championship points. Yeah, I was talking to him the other day, and he was saying how he really wants to get to that top eight. And uh, top eight is that sweet spot. So he, he said PAX is that the last event of the year. It's at the very end of August, and August 31st is the cutoff for World Championship points. So he said, that's, that's the one. That's the one that I, I have to get those points in to try and get that top eight. And, of course, uh, Silent Storm as well. Uh, Silent Storm is actually number two. So Silent Storm doesn't really even need it. He doesn't um, need those. Let us win. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure he's still going to be uh, trying really hard. Silent Storm has had some pretty good tourna tournament performances uh, over the course of the year. But um, tomorrow we will have Group B. I believe Group B will be starting at 9 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow, um, if I am remembering that correctly. Uh, you can see on your Aww. screen, there's Group B. Strife Crow, Dart, Roger, and Weasel will be Group B competing tomorrow. And uh, really looking forward to that one. Um, you, you had a sigh of dismay. That's right. I mean, Strife Crow is the time. Be great. Uh, the only regret I have is that it's going to be at 9 a.m., but it's okay. It'll be worth uh, waking up early to watch. These are some big matches with big uh, results at stake here. Yeah, for sure. And keep in mind, guys, make sure you head over to geico.onog.gg. You can uh, enter in to get a Geico quote, or you can always get a Geico quote, and then you can enter in to win an official TSM PC. You can also get a little bit more information uh, about the tournament and uh, everything, your, your one-stop shop for all things ONOG Summer Circuit. Um, but I think that's going to do it for us today. Uh, Trump, it's been a pleasure casting with you. Do you have any uh, final shout-outs or uh, any words that you'd like to give before we close out the stream? Way to go, Geico. Uh, being a sponsor, which isn't quite like in the esports realm, but way to like go into it, and I'm sure it'll pay off. UTSM. All right. Well, once again, thanks, Trump. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. So for myself, from Trump, from One Nation of Gamers, Team Liquid, TSM, and of course Geico, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.